Hello YouTube, this will be an update video on my CAN gauge mini, the color version and my two-way remote. Um, please excuse any background noises you will be hearing. Uh, I'm making this during the time that other people are still awake. So anyhow, without further ado, I want to show you the first uh, CAN gauge. Um, as it might look like it's off but actually it's not because it is on a timeout uh, inactivity timeout so anytime there's activity which you can see by the white LED uh, lighting up it will stay on and as soon as the timeout stops or activity stops it will time out it's set to 120 seconds right now and the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to have it a real plug and play uh, as you might know the OBD port the diagnostic port on the car has a constant 12 volt only uh, I do not understand why it is not also a switch 12 volt on there because obviously, I mean, um, if you want to diagnose something, you will turn on the ignition anyway or start the car. So you will not diagnose something that is uh, when the car is off because obviously the CAN bus is off too. It needs a trigger to turn on and transmit data. But yet uh, all the engineers in the world did not think of it to put also a switched 12 volt output on the OBD port. So right now I will have either do it like this or have the wire coming out, a switched wire for 12 volt coming out next to the plug which you will, you will have to connect to a switched 12 volt obviously. So uh, this is my way of doing it. I tried it in the car, it works beautifully. I had it sitting on my desk overnight, uh, well, 8 to 10 hours, something like that and uh, it stayed off all the time and uh, the next morning it just uh, started up and worked again all right now it's on the um, auto cycle mode and uh, you see if it gets uh, activity if it senses activity the screen stays on and if not it goes off uh, what i also want to show you is the two-way remote I finally did receive the transceivers they did come like this I did order uh, the antennas uh, extra and uh, this doesn't have, have the transceiver in there yet because I'm still working on the code it will go on like this and it will be on the back uh, I mean on the back of the PCB uh, what I want to show you here is uh, this uh, I did mount as you noticed it does vibrate it does have sound and it does have a LED a NeoPixel obviously of course um, so once you turn it on it does uh, vibrate three times I mean this is just a, a test uh, it beeps twice so it has uh, all the indicators that a human would uh, possibly like vibration audio visible so the only thing that it doesn't do is come out and slap you in the face <laughs> so <laughs> anyhow um so it does have a small vibration motor in there um it does have audio out and does have the neopixel side emitting neopixel up here uh, the sensors are here, 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 and here. And the bottom one, I mean, I am just took over the code I had and uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do with the sensors yet. There are different uh, ways and possibilities I can do. Right now I have the bottom, it turns on the engine light. It's practically a switch and it does also turn the NeoPixel in white. So this could be an extra function as a flashlight, or at least not flashlight, but uh, to illuminate your uh, your way, or if you do have a remote but uh, still have to use keys, I mean you could use this to 
couldn't find the door lock or whatnot. <clears throat> so this on the side button, this is actually the lock button. Uh, again, you have an uh, audible uh, indicator. You have actually, if I put it on the table, it does turn on. <laughs> and if I would have the polarity the other way around, I think it would turn the other way. I could make you make a clock like that, a real moving clock. Anyway, uh, when you lock it, you have the red LED and the sound. Uh, here it's just uh, one touch. On here I tried something that you have to touch this one before. Uh, okay, you see here it doesn't do anything. You have to touch this one so it will unlock and if it unlocks you also see the blinkers here and you get a green uh, notification and it beeps twice and it vibrates twice so it's so fast it's, it is actually twice but on the table it looks like it's only once but it's twice so twice for unlocking once for locking and uh, obviously this is a speaker i can have any tone coming out um, since this two-way remote you will have the possibility to send any information back to the remote and then you could get notification via the screen via sound via light and via vibration and um, this has obviously oh i also added the uh, temperature sensor on here, the readout uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit depending on where you are and it has also the voltage, battery voltage in volt and percent I don't know if I, I probably just use one of them I don't know which one I'm gonna go with I have to try it and this also has an accelerometer chip actually but uh, right now I'm not using it the receiver board or the other part that's going to be in the car does also have the temperature sensor with the pressure sensor the BMP 180 which you could read your temperature in the car and have it transferred to the remote and the ADXL 345 will be an activity monitor so if your get, car gets hit it will actually let you know on the remote and these transceivers go up to five kilometers that's about three miles so it is a very very long range so i don't think your car will be uh, further away than that distance and if it is i mean by the time you get there it will be too late anyway so um that's what will this this will be this has will also has a uh, canvas uh, connectivity so you could technically transmit any canvas data to your remote as well. The, this PCB has also a connection for a 1.3 inch display. So it could even have a display in the car. Um, the transceiver goes to the on the back. The screw terminals are also on the back. And um, so this will be the other part. You could uh, remote start your car or whatever, uh, open, close windows, doors, uh, chimneys. <laughs> uh, and this could also be used as a canvas node to add canvas capability to any vehicle, be it a bike, car, boat, uh, or add additional sensors to your car, like I will do in my case because I do not have oil temperature, nor do I have oil pressure. This is just a temperature sensor. And uh, with this, I will be able to add this to the car, add it to here, and then the canvas data will be uh, sent to the gauge. Sorry about that, that was a niece of my wife. Um, anyhow, uh, you will be able to add canvas sensors to an existing canvas uh, vehicle. That's all I'm gonna do. So this is actually a multi multi product. Um, now I lost the 
threat. Where was I? I was gonna say, say something else. So you could use it um, as a remote start as well and get confirmation and any sensors or any data that is gonna send will show on here. So this is a, there's a lot of uh, expanding possibilities. Uh, also, as you see, the wood is uh, um, oh man, I lost it. Anyhow, it will it uh, right now it does uh, turn on the sensors. The sensors right now are on their uh, most sensitive uh, setting. I can tune it down also this will have of course a frame around it a white one so the light will shine through um, that will also uh, make it less sensitive and I will think of other ways either to have it a certain uh, amount of timeout uh, like like a long press to um, recognize the touch or double tap double touch uh, I will think, think of something uh, I haven't uh, uh, decided on that yet or make something like this like I have to touch this sensor so this sensor will activate without it it won't I could do that on the bottom here and on this one as well of course so if I hold the remote like this for example it will be able to work but if I don't put my thumb up there it will not work this one of course still works on this version of the code so that's that um, the remote uses the 1284 chip at mega chip um, and it has plenty plenty of room um, uh, this is actually the second time I'm recording this video I have plenty of room left on this chip to expand it with screens and whatnot and um, yeah that was that oh i was talking about something else but i'll leave that off for now don't want to make this video too long because i know some people will not watch it to the end anyhow this is the update on the canvas uh, color version of the canvas gauge and my two-way remote oh in case you're wondering what this wire is here uh this board has uh USB Type-C connector that I did not receive yet, but I wanted to finish this at least for the, the rest of it because I connect the, I solder the connectors myself by hand. I do not reflow them because uh, Like on here you have some Play and if you reflow them they could end up crooked and that's I want them to be straight uh, compared to like a these chips that you see here and it's like all the way, the way crooked and that's the reason why I do, do those uh, the last and by hand so since I could not I would not be able to charge the battery I have the wire here coming out so I can charge it um, I will most likely make this with the wireless charging option as well because I would like to have it just uh, lay down and charge it instead of plugging it in but uh, it will have both options and as you see the display has a, a timeout for dimming uh, right now it's I think set to 10 seconds and um, this is like 10% of the illumination I could go down to 1% zero it would be off of course uh, I could do that as well I mean just leave it all the way off or have it just at 1% or 2% not percent uh, it goes from 0 to 255 um, so it will be dimmer and it would save even more battery um, that was that I think I told you about the sensors right about the readings did I well anyway I have a I think I did but I'm I'm saying it again you have a temperature here in Celsius uh, for my customers uh, overseas it will be Fahrenheit of course and you have a voltage here in volt and percent uh, I will I'm just trying it right now which I, I want to keep I'm not sure yet maybe I just do bars um, 
but that's it. Uh, one person had asked me if there will be any encryption on the remotes. Yes, there will be. Uh, it will be AE, AES encryption. So it will be secure. Um, well, the next step is to actually solder one of the transceivers in there. I also have a version uh, with the antenna on the PCB. This goes up to 100 meters, I think. It still has an uh, antenna connector, so you could still connect an antenna, external antenna to it. Maybe a bigger PCB antenna and put this on the side somewhere. If you do not like to have the antenna sticking out of the remote, which I personally like and I will have the antenna sticking out like this um, just like uh, actually I have one other friend Adam and he likes to have antennas as well uh, obviously you wouldn't want an antenna on your phone these days uh, as opposed to back then uh, I actually have still have a StarTec uh, Motorola StarTec phone which had kind of like the same antenna I will have to pull it out and show you something. Plus, I want to show you on the next videos two um, gadgets I built 30 years ago. And this one still works on the battery from over 30 years ago. Can you imagine buying these days a battery that's gonna last 30 years? I will open up on video. Plus, I have a uh, PCB that I made um, These days you can do all this With this back then you couldn't So anyway, I will show you these on the on the next video. I Know uh, Alex is waiting for it to crack this open and I just hope that the battery inside I I don't even remember if this was a kit or if I soldered it myself or what I did uh, it is actually a voice changer there's a microphone here speaker here and I hope that somewhere on here is a date on the battery so we can see exactly how long it was ago anyhow uh, this was it um, today is Sunday uh, in case you're watching this a couple days later so I do wish everybody a great week and uh, thank you for all your support, being it on Patreon, uh, Banggood or uh, by PayPal donations. I greatly appreciate it. Oh, I also wanted to show you I have here two of my uh, mega bootloaders that will ship tomorrow. So I have, oh, oh, I forgot, uh, I have opened my store and uh, no, I was not on a vacation all this time. I just couldn't ship to all countries. I still cannot ship to all countries. And uh, right now I cannot ship to the United States of America again. So they stopped accepting packages. So I still, I have. I can ship to Canada, I can ship to Mexico, but I cannot ship to the US, uh, go figure. And I also still cannot ship to Australia. And I know Dave and Alex are waiting for their gadgets and parts, but uh, right now my hands are tight and I hope it will change soon. Anyway, I blabbered away again. Uh, thanks for watching and take care everybody.